for the next presentation, Lars Nuden, with the title Gemtext and HTML Static Site Generator for TuxMachines.org. Okay, thank you. Hello. Um, I'll be presenting about Tux Machines and how, to, how I made uh, for them us a Gemtext and HTML Static Site Generator. Um, first off, what is Tux Machines? It's a news aggregation site which has been going on since, 19, uh, since 2004, and we're focusing on free and libre software and open source, and especially GNU Linux. There's a Gemini link and the HTTPS link. It'll, it's been on for about 20 years, 20 years next year, in fact. And historically, there's been reviews and other, his, other original content, but mostly these days, uh, short excerpts and links to fresh um, posts on, selected, on the selected topics. Uh, it's currently cu curated by uh, Rian Shestwitz and Roy Shestwitz since 2013. And since two uh, 2004 to 2013, it was by Suzanne Linton. There's about five uh, volunteer editors. And the re this is the result of accidentally writing a static site generator because Drupal was getting a little bit too heavy and we're having a little bit of reliability troubles with it. So the classical reasons, how hard can it be? And the spoilers, it wasn't that hard, but it took time. Um, laziness to avoid dealing with content management systems like Drupal or, or WordPress, which is even larger. They're good in their context, but it's more than what we needed. And then impatience. Uh, I looked at quite a few static site generators, and it turned out to be faster and easier to just more quickly write one. Um, a little bit about my background. I'm formerly an information, electronic information services librarian. I'm north, now in northern Finland by way of Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and Michigan. I got my uh, Master's of Information and Science uh, in, Masters in Information and Library Science at the University of Michigan. Um, I did some project work at uh, around 2005 on Koha here in Northern Finland, um, or not here, but up in Northern Finland. And uh, I'm not an expert in really anything. Prior to working with Perl, I did uh, some icon scripting from the University of Arizona. I wasn't there, but I used their software and some Snowball 4 programming. So the custom site static generator is a suite of five Perl scripts with a few shell wrappers, and it's accessed via SSH. We need just a simple interface for a simple task. Uh, it's running on Alpine Linux with Apache 2, uh, SQLite 3, and I've got HTML tidy and nano in there, and the output is HTML, gem text, and RSS. The server sites includes are for standardized headers, footers, and menus. And it enables us to be a proud member of the 256 kilobyte club. And as such, we remain 100% free from JavaScript, which is sadly today's basic, which we has some decades of that. Uh, why Perl? It was fast to write. Um, I really like hash, hashes, uh, regular expressions, and CPAN and I'll go and uh, cover some of the CPAN modules. The workflow is usually done by SS, well, always, always done by SSH, but usually done with forced keys for some of the editors who just want to get in and work. Um, others have customized their environment with aliases, shell, shell aliases. The workflow is three steps, editing the metadata for each post, edit the body markup, which is done via Nano, because no need to reinvent another editor when Nano works fine. And then validation first via tidy to make sure there's no syntactical errors. And then at that point, there's some additional sanity checks, like make sure there's no hot linking and a few other mistakes. Um, each post gets a unique HTTPS and Gemini URL. Since I've mentioned SSH, um, the open SSH is uh, more commonly known since 1999. Um, that's the most common implementation these days. And it's, that one's done via the OpenBSD project. So we benefit from their work on there. Originally, SSH was a Finnish invention from 1995. 
uh, Tato Ilonen, who was at the then Helsinki University of Technology. And it's a component of secure telecommuting for decades now from anywhere in the world. We have editors, quite a few places, five editors in different places. And it's useful for either interactive or scripting session, ses sessions and is not bothered by software patents. Here's just an overview um, of the CPAN modules. And of course, it goes without saying that strict and uh, warnings are included. But I ran out of space. <laughs> so these, these uh, allow things to be updated in a time uh, easy manner. It goes faster. The workflow goes faster than uh, with the old Drupal. And uh, being text-based, it's a little bit um, of a 1970s type interface. And there's none of the editors really objected to it. And they've all commented that it's actually smoother and faster now. So. The exporting goes very quickly. There's some measures I've taken to make sure that only the changes are written and not, not the whole system. It goes into for to help organize the data. Uh, it goes into four SQLite tables. The body, which is HTML, and they're consistent in the markups, which then allows it to be transformed into gem text later. Then there's a key file uh, table for tracking the unique file names for each one. And that has a flag whether it's written or not, the date, and then an arbitrary string, which is usually some, a some aspect of the title. Uh, some of the posts will have images. And I've done a primitive image deduplication because quite often the same image got posted again and again. And then the metadata is uh, rather simple. It's Dublin Core all the way through, and there's basically two core fields there. So you have all the all the tables are united by a single integer, which is a record number, and then you have the term and the value for the term. So this post from some weeks ago, or more than a few weeks ago, is, uh, is the author and the date it's created. And the date parsing has, has been very useful and, and easy in Perl. The metadata is dealt with using joins. Um, I don't know if that's a good way. I figure it's a clever way, which is probably a red flag that it's not so good. But um, we have a sample query. And the two, tab two tables are retrieving one record here, the metadata for one record. The, the important thing here, at least from my perspective, is that it's using a prepare and execute with placeholders. There's the editors, of course, trusted because they have SSH access, shell access. But just in case stuff goes wrong, there's, it's there on a matter of principle. So thought about things quite a bit first. and. The joke is that a week of coding can save hours of planning. And I thought about this quite, quite a bit and did lots of sketches and studies along the way. And that's one of the nice things I find about Perl is with the module you can, with the CPAN modules, you, it's very easy to just include them in a short one-off script, test what it's going to do, and then include it. The, 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 core, the, the meat of this project took about two and a half weeks, but then there was a very long tail as worked out the details. Um, one of the things that work, worked to the speed uh, aspect is I could work at my own pace, at my own schedule, didn't have to start at a time or stop at a time, and without interruptions such as meetings or conference calls. And again, the workflow is uh, mainly SSH keys and some with the forced commands and the customized shell interfaces for others. So you have the wrapper script and then that's the main that's the main one used for by some of the several of the editors and then 
The other ones that are the more interesting ones would be the extract post, which uh, retrieves the information from the SQL ta tables and puts them into files. So each post gets a file, uh, each Gemini post gets a file, and each HTML, each, uh, HTTPS uh, document, web document gets a, its own file. There's a matching name. And so again, the, uh, some of the modules, oops, oops. the uh, CPAN modules helped with that quite a bit. So um, during the development, um, there was a lot of pa passive participation. And that was kind of fun. So for a while, we had a Git hook with an MQTT, MQTT uh, notification and code, so code updates. So we'd push out notifications when the, when the code base was changed. Um, then for amusement, uh, not counting two refactors, uh, it's about 3,200 3, lines of Perl code and about 100 lines of uh, shell script. And the idea is to keep it simple. I might get around to refactoring it again. It, the initial development was an early operation was done on a Raspberry Pi, which you're pretty, I think, all familiar with, the tiny, inexpensive Linux-based single board computer. But it's now in a proper data center for availability purposes. So for the, from the Gemini part of the site, it's ranking at the top uh, in Lupa. And among the top, there's a few sites that have the same number. And we get to about six, we got to about 6,000 uh, non-bot visitors per day back in June, but currently checking just the other day, it's the last week, it's been up to about seven. So it's been gradually growing over time. The, the web visitors are about 42K per day. So this is a little bit rushed. I haven't presented for a long time. So, but I thank the organizers and the attendees, both here and online, and then Suzanne and Roy and Rianna and Ariadne and the editors, and especially the Promox. <laughs> oh, I got so much help at, at Promox. So, at this point, um, what kind of questions do people have? about the gem text and HTML. We have, here is what, what it looks like in the Amphora client. And it's, it's pretty simple. Um, it's one of the nice things about Gemini is it's just information, there's no, no bling. And then a sample article from that day it shows the a good title and some in, other information. But really, with, you just have, uh, with Gemini, you just have three levels of heading and some block, block quotes and links. And it's nice and simple. Yes? Yes. Yeah, which, which one would you like to see? Okay. Like, and it's a piece of this. Okay. Okay, <laughs> so. Yeah. So I'm curious. Thank you. You're welcome. Please don't laugh or cry at the code. <laughs> no. But here is the uh, one that creates the uh, files from the SQL database. And it's um, right, this one writes both the gem text and XHTML. And it puts it in the default directory. There's a lot of, lot of options here. Oh, I see. I don't use data dumper anymore, but it's still in there. So I, there's things to change. Um, so here's the usage routine. And you can extra, I can extract the entire database or just just the update ones, and I can do just just Gemini or just the HTML. 
and I can just extract just the unwritten file, or the unre unwritten records to files. So that's, or did you want to see the source of the Gemini? The source of the Gemini. Oh, okay. But that was interesting as well. Okay. Um, I'm not logged in to, ah. to, to that machine, but um, let's see. Hmm? Oh, the, 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 that client can't, but I think I can save it. Okay. Ha. I So you can see the markup for Gemini is or gem text is very simple. This this one just the uh, equal signs with the greater sign is this one. These are links, and so there's three fields in a link. There's an indicator that yes, this is a link coming up. Then the link it's then the link itself, and then the text for the link and it's there's not much to it so I'll open. so you can see the first link here number one calling all artists and here calling all artists so it's, it's tremendously easy to, to use um, the XPath, I think it's the XPath module to, to look up the link, links and other components. And then I just have ex, uh, extract the URL and the anchor and transform to this. I guess I could have done it with XSLT module, but that I think is uh, for me painful. And I think for people nodding is painful to them. Uh, I have a different project unrelated to this where I did use XSLT, but um, yeah. <laughs> so, but there's three headings, three heading levels and the uh, the pound sign or hash or whatever you want to call it, Octothorpe. Um, a single one is heading level one, two is heading level two, and then three is heading level three. So it's quite simple. You're welcome. So it's, it's overall a very simple project, but not, not so common, I think. Yes? Hello. Yes. Uh, why do you uh, plan to uh, support a gem text? Could you say, what? Why do you uh, do you support gem text, uh, Gemini? Support it. Yes. Why? Oh, okay. Um, because it's just a lightweight and convenient way to get information, and I've benefited from the people that have put up Gemini capsules, as they're called. And this is a way of making the same information available in an automated manner. To for it's, there's no there's no computing overhead to speak of to put to to do the Gemini text, and it increases the outreach, because it reaches a, a very different audience as well. So, thank you.